Alright guys, doing something a little different today. I'm going to be sitting down and the reason why is because I uh, decided to let you in on my latest addition to my guitar arsenal. And if you don't know what that is, it's, you know, and you ask a guitar player. <laughs> but anyway, um, I decided uh, lately, I was caught in an impetuous purchase because I decided, you know, I'd go out and participate in the holly, holiday spirit, you know, meaning that I was out enjoying all the sales that were going on. And uh, in that vein of uh, <laughs> sales was Guitar Center. So um, I saw, you know, I got some mailers and saw they were having a sale. And I'm like, you know what? I haven't been to Guitar Center in years. I haven't been out shopping for instruments in years because I haven't been gigging. I haven't been playing. I haven't been songwriting. I haven't been playing at church. I haven't been doing anything. And, of course, with that, my chops have been getting sloppy and, uh, you know, you know, it's like running. You know, if you don't do it, you're going to lose your ability to do it. And that's, that's kind of where I was at. And so I, I thought, well, maybe a good inspiration for that would be to buy a new instrument. And um, so I decided to go out and check it out. And there was a fantastic sale going on on Mitchell Guitars. And this is what I ended up bringing home after two days going down there and checking it out and playing it and all. And this is the Mitchell X, uh, MX430Q with a string of shit after it in the numbers. Um, that, that's what this is. But I thought I'd go into a little bit of a review and explain what I liked about it. Um, you know, the first thing being, of course, the looks. I like that they offered alternative colorways. I, you know, I'm not one that really gets into the standard wood tone guitars, you know, I, I, regardless how good they sound, you know, um, I, I, I just don't get into that. I, I think that the market space in guitars is so competitive that with that competition should bring at least a little bit of individuality to it, you know, and there's just a hundred guitars out there that look the same. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I like the fact that they were offering different things. There's just like three different colorways of this particular model. And, um, you know, but, but I just liked the looks of it when I got there. It wasn't like a solid black, which were kind of cool a while back, you know, but it had that, that black, and you could still see the wood tone under it. Um, other things I liked about it was, you know, the fact that it was so thin. This is a very thin body, and usually you would think that with a thin body would come a lack of, you know, a, a tonal response out of it. You know, a lot of the thin bodies, they don't have a whole lot of bass response, and in fact, they usually end up coming out sounding plasticky and they don't sound very great but this one I was actually pleasantly surprised I think there's a good well-rounded tone that comes out of it. there's some you know from the low end to the high end there's there's good there's a good tone there's also a, a decent uh, pickup preamp in here uh, you know it's a Fishman and it has not just the tuner but it also has the three band EQ which you usually end up paying more for uh, and it has the phase select switch on there uh, either input is standard, it doesn't have XLR, that's kind of one place that you kind of lose out for the price range, but it does have your, your quarter inch in the, the strap uh, nub there, so you, you can connect there. Uh, you can see that I still have a tag on it, Pimpin Diodario strings, obviously, you know, that's, that's what they recommend and what's probably installed on here from the factory. Uh, the other thing that I really liked about this guitar that I just that I couldn't shake, I was down there. I checked out a Breedlove, a Breedlove solid mahogany. Even the the soundboard on it was mahogany, and it was a really dark finish. Just beautiful guitar, and I love the way it played. It sounded great. Price range was a little bit outside what I was looking at. You know, again, um, it was it was five hundred bucks. Not that that's a lot for a guitar. I think that's very reasonably priced. But again, for me, eh, I'm not supporting my hobby. I'm not, you know, out there gigging. You know, I, I couldn't justify that cost. So I was, I was really looking for a good deal. And when I went down to, to Guitar Center, I was actually was looking at a Jackson Dinky uh, electric guitar. And I, you know, I played it, loved it. I was almost sold on it, you know. But then when I started trying to tune the thing up in the store, 
I realized that that, uh, that Jackson branded bridge that they had on there, the floating Floyd Rose <laughs> knockoff, uh, it, you know, the tuners were, they were like grindy. They were like, you could just tell it, it wasn't good machining. It wasn't, you know, so I had to give up on that. I was like, you know, I'm, I, I didn't even get to the point of playing it. I didn't even hear what it sounded like. I'm sure it sounded great because the, the guitar got great reviews. And I'm sure it just sounded fantastic. And I really liked the way it played because I did rip a couple of licks on there before I ever got to anything. But that's what inspired me to tune it. And when I felt the, the tuners, I was like, I can't do this. I can't. You know, it's, it's just a, a breakdown waiting to happen, you know. And so I, I couldn't bring myself to it. So anyway, I ventured off into the acoustic room where I was looking at these things. And that's where I saw the Breed Love. And then, you know, I saw this on sale for 319 bucks, Regularly $399 on sale, 80 bucks off. And, you know, as I stated, I already like the, the looks of it. I like the, the width of, of the body. I like the, the electronic package. Um, the other thing that's very important about this guitar is the fact that it has this fantastic neck, which is actually a mahogany neck. The, the fretboard is rosewood as usual, but the neck is actual mahogany. Now, for those that don't know, a, a guitar neck, it's not flat. It, it usually has a radius to it. And, you know, that radius has to fit what a player is actually looking for. But what's different about this guitar is that you know, usually guitars, the back of the neck also has a radius to it. This one actually doesn't. This is more of a D-shaped radius. Now, now you get that, that term from, like, the, the Japanese chef's knives. You know, they're not round, they're not oval. They, they have, kind of have this little D-shape on it that is intended to fit in your hand, give you better control, and, and add to ergonomics. And to me, that's what this neck reminds me of, is this very sharp kind of triangular shape and then they just put a generous radius on top of that um, so it's not really round and you know to me that just makes sense because it also adds to the structural rigidity of it the other thing that it does is it it throws the balance point of the guitar off you know on a guitar like this I think you know if I was to try and find the balance point here you would see that it's you know in this curve and other guitars, if I was to do the same thing, you know, if I had my hand in the curve, you would see the guitar just plop that way because there's just too much weight going on out here. So depending on how you like the balance of the guitar, um, it, it kind of demonstrates how much more uh, mass the neck has to it and what that triangular shape is doing for it as far as weight. So I, I have a lot of, um, you know, uh, expectations that I'm getting out of this, this neck, you know. Now, having said that, uh, you know, something that I got to point out is that I'm not one that believes that if you spend three or four hundred bucks on a guitar that you can get a lifetime of use out of it. That, I don't believe that at all. Um, you know, uh, when I bought this, they were, they were trying to sell me on, you know, a a, a you know extended warranty for 120 bucks or something like that. I'm like, 120 dollars? Jeez! That's like, you charge me almost half the cost of the guitar for a warranty over three years, which, you know, in that time, I'm probably going to want a new guitar anyway, you know? Um, and, and I don't want to get locked into the same price range uh, or what you consider to be a, a suitable substitute for the guitar. You know, I'm, I, there's probably, by then, there'll probably be some badass carbon fiber stuff out there that, that I want to get into, you know? So I, uh, you know, I was like, I couldn't bring myself to that. But my point being that, at that price range, guys, you know, I see these reviews knocking things, the guitars like this, that after two years, something cracked out, something, you know. Um, I just don't expect the guitar to last a lifetime at that price. Now, back in the day, when I was gigging and stuff, and I put the money into a, a $2,500 guitar, which which I have with me, um, this, this beautiful monster here, my Parker Fly Deluxe, which got me through years and years of faithful playing totally reliable this thing i pull out of the case you know years later and it's still perfectly in tune in concert perfectly in tune uh yeah i couldn't throw it out to save my life you know and i think this guitar was uh you know again this was one of the originals this is back in 96 97 is what this model is and i think that back then uh it was in good company reeves gabrell was playing one on uh, some late night music thing with David Bowie that I saw him playing with and I was like, oh, dang, there's my guitar, 
you know, and, and uh, you know, the salesman at, at Grandma's Music had, had mentioned that Eddie Van Halen had bought one of these, um, you know, and so to get this particular model of guitar in this particular colorway, you know, it, it, there, there just wasn't a lot of these. And so I, I can't say that if I was to sell this today that I would sell it for less than I bought it. Um, this this is an amazing instrument. You know, it's it's got me through. If I was if I did decide to take up gigging again or something, you know, I mean, this this little guy would uh, probably probably you know be my go-to for it. You know, but you know, just banging around the house. Uh, no, I think it's going to stay in its nice protective package, and uh, you know, I'll I'll keep it for for quite a while longer. But uh, anyway. That's what I expect. A lifetime guitar for that that kind of price. That's that's what I expect. For this, for, for four hundred dollars or less, this is just a a great instrument, you know, and, and like I said, I like the tonality. If you listen, I, I've got the mic about three or four feet from me. Um, you know, it's just room ambience. There's no amplification. There's no no uh, noise, you know, effects or anything else to it. <laughs> Again, there's no effects, no nothing. That's just the sound of the guitar as it sounds in the room. And you know, hopefully you can hear. Uh, I'm not using anything special on the mic. It's just a flat EQ uh, condenser mic. Um, I, I don't color the mics at all. That's all done in post. But I'm probably not even going to do that here. Uh, but um, yeah, just just I. I, I just really fell in love with this when I, I played it, you know, for the price range. I just couldn't, I just couldn't not do it, you know. Just a great, great, you know, action-wise, uh, if you're wondering about the action on the neck, oh, I did check the infamous, I did check the infamous 12 fret buzz, um, no, no audible buzz on the fret um, at that point, very low action, the neck's very straight, uh, really, really very... <laughs> It's just got this this really nice, well-rounded. I I can hear like all the strings in it. Of course, my chops are not up, but <laughs> you get the point. Like I said, this will be a good inspiration to get back into playing. I think uh, you know at least on the acoustic side. I'm still going to keep my eyes out for a nice electric, um, something I just keep around the house and keep open and will inspire me to just pick it up and play it but uh, yeah in this week's sale I just didn't find the electric but this was a this was a good little find. Yeah.